Now we've had from two notable speakers, Mr. Mohale and Mr. Um, uh, Alan Not Craig, uh, both of whom have uh, now left us. I want to assure you, ladies and gentlemen, that um, we're listening, we're taking notes, because as we have done in the past couple of years, is that at the end of the summit, we do a summary of the most important lessons that we have come out out of the presentations. Um, so when we close, there would be a verbal a summary a read back to you as, as the conference uh, delegates, uh, but also we will formalize it as, as an account of what today was all about. But I want to also encourage you to continue tweeting, doing all the things that some of us that are not socially um, <laughs> electronically articulate uh, are doing because out of those messages that you are posting on the social networks, um, you're not only inciting an interest out there, but you're giving us a recorder of what it is that was your most important nugget that you're taking out of the Leadership Summit. So thank you very much uh, for continuing to place the context of what we're discussing here on social network. Now, without further waste of time, it gives me a great pleasure to invite Dr. Tami Mazwai to do his own presentation. He's actually the, currently a National Planning Commissioner, so he would have disputed or corrected Mr. Mohali for having it said that it took 24 months before the old set of commissioners passed the bait on to the next, uh, because I think he only had to wait for four months for his letter of appointment. So these are the guys together with some of the commissioners that are really spearheading the implementation of the NDP. Oh, Dr. Tami Mazwai is a former journalist and auditor and, and, and editor. Most of you have heard about him, have read about him. Currently, he's an advisor to the Minister of Small Business Development, very well known in the SMME space, very well known in academia. He has worked and established a, a small business development uh, center at the University of, of Joburg, and he consults widely on, on, on enterprise development. And it is my singular honor, Dr. Mazwai, to welcome you on stage for your presentation. We look forward to it. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, I will apologize up front that uh, I might not be able to take uh, questions because I am rushing a flight. Uh, and there's another summit that I've got to be at uh, this afternoon. So I'm very uh, sorry about that. Now, I believe that a lot of people are very much aware of that uh, slogan on the stage, which is uh, the National uh, Development Plan. Uh, we uh, started about six months ago. The first uh, planning commission, its function was to uh, do that, to, 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 to come up with a national development plan. And then uh, we must now see to its uh, implementation. Now there are some slides which uh, I'll just have to skip because the important thing I wanted to talk to you about was the what we, are doing, what we are trying to address very, uh, very urgently, the whole issue of township and rural uh, economies. But the, it's not just a vision, it's a long trust strategic uh, 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 plan with the uh, four broad, uh, and then we've got overarching goals that we must achieve by 2030. And as you are aware that the have said that we want to create about 11 million jobs 90% uh, of which must come from the small business uh, sector. So some of the pillars are, as you can see, uh, act active citizenry, uniting South Africans, are con a common program to eliminate poverty, inequality, and unemployment. Uh, and of course, we need what we've got to understand. It is a plan of South Africans. It's not a government plan. It's a South African plan, and that's what all of us must always keep in our mind. Uh, the, uh, one of the issues that we've got to address is that uh, if you want to create 11 million jobs, then the whole issue of how do you unleash the productive potential of every South African, particularly those who are entrepreneurs, 
And that means that to identify those gems in the rural and in the townships who really can make a difference in many ways. And how do we identify some of the constraints that continue to bar these people from making a meaningful uh, contribution? So there is a unit in government now which deals with uh, the uh, which deals specifically with the, uh, with the National uh, de Development Plan. There is a DG who deals with that. So there is now a clear uh, outline of where the country must be going to in terms all the government departments have now tailored their, uh, their plans to fit into the National Development Plans. To the, to, to the National Development Plan. When we did an analysis at the last time, we find that it was 47%, uh, which is remarkable, that it is 47%, there's now a 47% alignment by all government departments to the plan. So this is very uh, remarkable. Now, uh, some of the projects that, uh, that we're talking of, obviously, uh, uh, that were focusing on, I believe that the president was here earlier on this year to talk about Operation Pakisa. The minister was here in April also talking about the Operation Pakisa, and I accompanied the minister. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, we have got to look at how our ocean can make a meaningful contribution to our economy, same as the Malaysian. Uh, coastline did in terms of, because some of the ideas we got uh, from the, uh, we, we got from Malaysia. And of course, we have, uh, Operation Pakisa has identified opportunities, uh, whether it's in oil and gas, there's a huge uh, project currently underway, 9.2 billion in, uh, 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 in, in Saldana, in which Transnet is being driven by Transnet but the Department of Small Business Development is already a, a, a participating. Now, what has got to be clear to all of us is that if at all it is a South African plan, then there are going to be partnerships between government and, and elements of civil society, whether it's the universities, whether it's the private sector, whether it's uh, uh, the, the, the multinationals, wherever, because you cannot, in a big economy like South Africa, talk of, 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 of a centralized command. The plan is going to be implemented from various, uh, but, but there, there will be an overall plan, but all of us have got our strategic roles to play in it, and there are going to be various partnerships. Uh, some of them are already delivering, for instance, the private sector has been intervening in the education and uh, in, in the in the in the education crisis, particularly that uh, are affecting the universities since the fees must fall time. I mean, since when Asana has been busy in that uh, direction. So a lot of things are already uh, happening in terms of the uh, what we are failing to do. Of course, is to really have, and it's not possible to be having monthly uh, monthly imbizos to tell society what is happening because I mean uh, there are too many things that are already uh, 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 there are too many things happening now to get to what we are doing we have created three work streams the first work stream enhancing the quality of life is led by Professor Vivian Taylor from the University of Cape Town. The second extreme, active citizenry, capable state and leadership, is led by yours truly. And then the third extreme, an expanded, inclusive and fairer economy, is led by uh, Mr. Elias Masilela, who was previously with the uh, PIC. And then we've got the youth and education as a cross cutter through all these uh, extremes. And it is uh, that, cross, uh, that, that focus 
across Qatar is led by uh, Tessa Dooms, who's a sociologist, and she used to be a lecturer, I think, uh, uh, in Stellenbosch University. But she is part of uh, Workstream One. In terms of the Workstream One, the focus areas, cost of living and social protection, education, health outcomes, food security, and youth uh, development. So those are the focus areas for, uh, for the work for the, uh, for the first work stream. And if Tala must expand a little on what they are doing, it's reducing the cost of living, and the first focus is really on the, what is normally referred to as the social wage. And the whole issue of social protection, we've had a review of the white paper, and that white paper now, which is the Bible for the Department of Social Development, will now be adopted and it will be the new strategy for social protection for the country. And then there are the whole issue of food security, uh, the whole uh, where now you find that I mean, there is greater focus on getting, the, on, on getting more blacks into farming, into, into commercial farming, because food security has become a very, very critical uh, uh, issue. The second work stream, which is active citizenry, capable state and leadership, has got the following four focus areas, capable and developmental state. I know that all of us here have got, we have got our own understandings of what the developmental state is, but what, whatever it is, uh, we will be coming with, our, uh, with, uh, with an understanding which we hope will be acceptable to all who are just working on it. Then we've got the whole issue of active citizenry, because if the citizenry is not active, it is not holding anybody to account. You've got to have an active citizenry that says, this is right and this is wrong. And this is right must not only apply to government, it must apply to other sectors of society, whether it's business, whether it's the youth, whatever is happening, because what beat me uh, last year was the deafening silence we had, and we still continue to hear when our young people even bend down universities for as long as activists, the citizenry is quiet, and that is seen as the responsibility of government, our country is in trouble. These universities are our asset. They don't belong to government, they belong to us. It's our taxes that built this university. And then the third focus area is citizen responsibility and also issues like what citizens should be doing because all of us like to talk about our rights, but what we forget is that uh, every right has got a corresponding obligation. You just cannot talk of rights as if you are owed something. If at all you are a student, you get free education, your obligation is to pass. And to make sure that you pass with flying colors. Because it is society that is paying your school fees at university. The contribution that your parents make is about 50% of what the taxpayer makes. So we've got to understand that for as long as we as civil society keep on saying ERDP is a figure nini. We are failing ourselves. We just have got to understand that we have got to be driving development. We've got to be driving change. We've got to be driving transformation because it is only in that respect that we are then going to protect the progress we make as a nation. And then the, th the third work stream, here are the agent focus areas overarching view on growth and employment, confidence building and institutional strengthening, infrastructure, uh, the competitiveness and dynamism of our exports, stimulating the SME sector, rural and the, the township economies, the labor policy, and the cost of doing business. I think that uh, there is a report that has recently issued, which is authored by Trevor Manuel, amongst others, on uh, the whole issue of uh, doing business in South Africa. Are we being very, uh, making sure that people don't have to spend months and months 
trying to achieve this and that. So that then is the third work stream that is led by a uh, Commissioner Malala. And then, of course, when it comes to youth and education, there's something that a lot of people here are not aware. There are three million young people who are not in education, who are not in employment, and who are not in training. Three million youths. Fifty percent of them don't even have, I think, no, it's 20 percent don't even have metric. So you've got to sit alone to understand here is this young person, is unlikely to get a job. What is this person going to do to society? Three million young people, not in education, not in employment, and not in training. And they are our responsibility. Because a lot of them are the young people who were the running, who were involved in the liberation struggle, whether they were throwing stones or whatever they were doing. So we cannot enjoy the democracy which they fought for and keep them out of it. We just cannot. So they are our responsibility. Now, uh, when we come to township and rural economies, our government has invested a lot in townships and in rural areas. But in terms of economic entrepreneurship. But the return on investment is very low. We do not have vibrant businesses in the townships and in the rural areas that are driven by black people. And we still have got sprawling informal sectors. <coughs> but in terms of formal businesses, that are going to make a major contribution to the economy in terms of skilling people and growing, becoming sustainable, were coming far short. A study done by the Nseka at the time showed that in the informal sector it is 90% black. The formal sector continues to be 80% white. There's something seriously wrong in that. The rural areas, it's worse. People are not even getting into. So, so what a lot of research has been done about this, but that research has not really told us what the constraints are. It is the usual research coming out because universities are, are concerned about this. When I was at the University of Johannesburg, we did our research. We found that less than five, seven percent of businesses in Soweto have turnovers of a million or so. But 70% have got turnovers of less than 30,000 rand per annum. Now, if a toilet business makes 10 over, not profit, two or 3,000 rand per month, there's something seriously wrong. I was in Pizana, I've got a cousin there, and she has got a spaza shop, formal. And then I asked her, how much do you make a day? She said, if told, I've done very well, and so on, I would have made about 50, 20 rand, and so on. And she's making so, so little money because there are hundreds of them on the ground. But the issue is that you've got to ask yourself, if people have got to make 20, 000, 20 rand a day as business people, how much of it is profit? How much of if must buy stock and so on? So these are the dynamics that we must, uh, uh, we must engage with and so on. Then, then you don't get surprised when people spend their lives on Nyaope, when people become alcoholics, when you go into a township on a Wednesday, 
At nine o'clock, you'd swear it was a Saturday because people are just milling around. Now, these are the issues that we are addressing in the planning commission because we know that until we do something about those people, we don't have a democracy. We are just not. And when that explosion comes, it won't be black against white like in the past. It will affect us all. That's why the National Planning Commission is now saying what needs to be done as urgently as we can. So that is my responsibility, that, works, that focus area. So what we have decided then is to have seven dialogues. In those seven dialogues, three are going to be in the rural areas, and three are going to be in the townships, and one is going to be in an informal settlement. We are, regardless of the, because the research has been qualitative, it has come with all sorts of things, but now we want these seven dialogues to put about 100 people into a hall and to say, what are the issues? Why are foreign owners taking over your markets? The research that I've done tell, shows me that, that even sectors like hairdressing, where blacks, our people are now completely out, the foreigners are dominating. The foreigners are now getting into the taxi industry and so on. I'm not saying this because I'm xenophobic. I'm just saying this, I'm a realist to say, if at all our people are outside of wealth creation, they are those protests that you see on a daily basis that move from area to area are going to be a feature of our lives. The social instability is going to be a feature of our lives into eternity because people are not going to sit and sulk in the corner and throw their hands up into the air when the child is crying for a meal and they cannot pay their school fees. We should be worried that 30% of our, 30, a third of our population depends on social grants. That's unsustainable. If at all a third of the population has got to, these are figures from Badili Hotla, if a third of the population has got to depend on social grants, but the tax base is not expanding, we are facing an explosion. We are facing an explosion because we will not have money to pay those social grants. And once we start stopping those social grants, heaven help us all. So these are the issues that one has got to, uh, uh, to, to, to bring to your attention to say, men, you might be able to feed your pet, but know that compared to a lot of people in the rural areas in the township, your, your pet is bourgeoisie. That is reality. So we've now designed a tool that is going to guide those dialogues. Because if I tell you put people in a hall and you say, what is not working? Then they're going to whinge and blame government for everything. So the tool was designed by uh, people who are at the rock face, uh, some uh, people who are working on enterprise development in various departments of government. And we said to them, what are the issues that you believe must be addressed? And so on. So one, uh, it's six of them, the jockey, are the right people being supported? Are we giving people the right people opportunities to be entrepreneurs. If at all the Nelson Bay Mandela, the, 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 the local municipality gives a tender, is it giving that tender to an entrepreneur or to a tenderpreneur? Two, leadership. Do local community and local business leaders understand what entrepreneurship and LED is about? These are basic things. When I was doing a rural development program in KZN, some of the town council members did not know what's the difference between community development and economic development. They did not know the difference. And that's reality. 
And you cannot blame government because we elect these people. But having elected them, what, is, what are we doing to make sure that they understand the issues that they must be seized with? And then the third proxy is infrastructure. Are we transforming, because the townships were created as hostels where blacks go and sleep at night. In the morning they wake up to the CBD to go and sell their labor. They were never designed as where people have got to live and so on. So is that infrastructure changing? Four, township spend and market access. So where to spend 12 billion a year? 12 billion. That's the spending power in Soweto. But 70% of that <coughs> leaks out. It goes out. It builds Sentinel, it builds Runback, all those fleshy areas. Even when we post that, we've got the shopping mall in Soweto. The shops that are in the shopping mall are owned by outsiders. The money is leaking out. And if money leaks out, there's going to be little economic activity in the area. And the businesses are going to suffer. Entrepreneurship suffers and so on. Because you've got to increase the circulation of money in any area and even bring money from outside. And then economies are going to. But instead, the reverse is, open, the, the reverse is happening. So we to uh, the city of Johannesburg, then decided to get into a, uh, then started to have, or the housing government, then started to have a situation in which they sponsor pick and pay to mentor spaza shops. Now, how do you sponsor pick and pay to extend its market? Because that's what is happening. We have lost the power of being creative. So these are the areas, and then the regulatory framework, community entrepreneurship. So these are the issues that we're going to engage communities. And these uh, dialogues uh, are going to be, uh, four of them are going to be, uh, there are going to be in the three townships, in three townships and three rural areas. The townships that have been selected in Soweto, uh, PE, uh, 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 the Dean, Professor Lagardin, has been, uh, uh, he's been twisting my arm and I've given in. So it's going to be uh, uh, here in uh, PE, and then it's also going to be in Cape Town because uh, there's a huge colored community in Cape Town, and we've got to understand that. What are the issues? Then for the rural areas, it's going to be Northern, KZN, Limpopo, and uh, the Northwest. And the first dialogue is going to be after the elections, end of uh, February. And then uh, we're going to then uh, have the seventh, is going to be uh, in an informal settlement. And that's going to be uh, in a deep split because of the work that the World Bank has started. So this tool has already been discussed with the World Bank, the ILO, because, and they told us when we had our session on Friday, that this approach has also been tried in Malawi and in Zambia. So we think we're on the right track. It's just to get people in one room and to say, but why are you giving your markets to foreigners? Not because we're xenophobic, but because we have got to make our people entrepreneurs so that they must compete effectively against, this, uh, against other people. So this is what we'll be doing then as the National Planning Commission, and I'll be coming here then uh, in September to have this, it will be at the campus of NMMU in uh, the one that the previously known as VISTA, because we cannot really go and discuss township economies on the broad walk. We just can't. We've got to make sure that the people who are the discussion are the people affected, but it doesn't stop you from going to that to go and make your contribution, your tapenies worth. So the questions to ponder, are the questions still hostels of labor, or are they now part of it? My view is that Kwaza Kele is still that hostel outside of Port Elizabeth. 
uh, and so on. Uh, is empowerment happening and how can it be measured? The beautiful thing about South Africa is that we boast that we've got some of the best systems, but we always measure ourselves in terms of the systems we have and not on the changes that are happening with the people. You've got the PFMA, which is loaded all over. But the PFMA is the biggest problem when it comes to the empowerment of people. We've got to address some of those issues. Uh, have the townships graduated from being taverns and taxis? Are the debates on the regulatory environment and escape route? Whenever you go to people like the Free Market Foundation and you talk about uh, small business, then they tell that they talk to you about the heavy regulatory environment. As if, if we remove regulations, all of a sudden people will be living happily, they'll be running successful businesses and so on. We always have these escape routes when we don't want to confront the truth. We are now trying to confront the truth. And lastly, we've got to find out our communities being welded together. Do you still have a white PE and a black PE and a colored PE, or do you just have a PE? These are the uncomfortable questions that we've got to ask ourselves. As I said, good people, thank you very much for this invitation. I will be back in September for the, uh, for the, uh, uh, for the, uh, for the discussion, which I'll be finalizing with uh, uh, Dr. Lagardine. Uh, but uh, we're looking forward to the challenge. Uh, I know that some things were said about the initial planning commission, but, now, uh, but as you can see, the planning commission is is running at full speed. We've got five years, and after five years, I want to look at myself in the mirror and say, you made a contribution. Thank you very much. Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mazwai. And I know he is indeed pressed for time, but I thought it would just be such an unfortunate thing to allow him to go without him answering just two questions. There's a couple of entrepreneurs here. Um, a lot of people know you before the work that you're doing in the commission. Um, there are some members uh, that are coming from NMMU, um, particularly the business school. So I'm sure somebody really wants to know, um, to have an answer from you on a subject matter that may be different to what you've just presented. I'm opening up the opportunity. Is there one or two questions? Huh? Okay, uh, there's Neil and then, yes, uh, uh, Mr. Mbembe, can I give somebody else an opportunity? Uh, and Kevin, okay, shoot. Thanks, Doctor, um, and thank you very much for your input and, and I'm happy for the, for the work that you guys are doing, especially on the issue of the youth lens uh, as cross-cutting themes. I, I don't really have a question, I have a, a comment uh, really on the issue of the township and uh, economy particularly with the um, expatriate or foreign businesses uh, in the areas. Um, in some of my conversations with them, part of the challenge is around the issue of safety and security in townships, a big issue. And I don't think a lot of business would invest their own resources if safety and security is not a priority for that environment. The second one is, is really just in terms of the approach to competing with um, these uh, expatriate or foreign uh, investors in, in township economy. There should be co-opetition. Um, we should cooperate to compete uh, because the disadvantage that very often our people come from is, a, is this culture of entrepreneurship that is not really steeped, whereas a lot of our friends from, from Ethiopia and Kenya and these, these uh, East African countries that come here come with hundreds and thousands of years of trading. And this is part of the culture. And you see that in their eyes and the, how they trade and how they make services. So that, uh, that is really just a caution that we don't uh, come across as trying to say we want you out because we want to compete, but we want to learn from what they are doing that successfully. And I think that's the model that we should uh, aim to learn from. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Neil Kempfer. Um, Kevin Hessler. Excuse me. Thank you very much, um, Doctor. 
really appreciate your presentation. Uh, one of the points that stood out to me in your presentation was the role of active uh, citizenry and the collaboration between business and government. And uh, heading up the Nelson Mandela Bay Business Chamber and the interactions and collaboration we have, particularly with local government and uh, the provincial government, um, we've been working as good corporate citizens, uh, engaging with them on a number of issues around a vision for the city and the region, economic development, etc. But one of the challenges we're finding, although we've had good cooperation in a number of key areas, in some areas in government there's a measure of resistance towards active citizenry and being held accountable. How in your mind, uh, through the National Development Plan, do we as good corporate citizens engage with the local and provincial and national governments even, and, and find the willingness to be held accountable on key priorities that are important to business, that we can collaborate and partner on those uh, to drive the economies forward? Just your opinion on that, please. Okay, uh, thanks very much. I'll start uh, with that question. Uh, uh, we have got a timetable in which we are going to have uh, roadshows throughout the country. And in those roadshows, that's where we hope to stimulate discussions between the various sectors of uh, society. We know that it won't happen on, on, on its own. We know that, I mean, uh, that, uh, 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 for instance, when people are new in government, uh, they will find that, I mean, that uh, uh, they know what's good for you. But it's only when they get matured in government that they know what, that, that you know what's good for you. And so on, you see. So those are the dynamics that we've got to, uh, uh, so that we've got to, uh, 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 that we've got to, uh, to, to, to uh, that we've got to, uh, to, to, that we've got to grapple with. Last year, in December, we, I mean, we uh, did an analysis of uh, the media team ex expenditure framework to look at uh, the allocation of funds. And we found that, I mean, that it was just a repeat of what was even being done by the apartheid government in terms of allocation funds. So now we're changing that mindset around to say that. So we're very active. So we are going to have these roadshows and we are going to make sure that, uh, because what we do is that when we have these roadshows, we then report back to the president and cabinet and say this, and so that the pressure then comes from the top, from the top to make sure that these interactions between society must happen, but at times they happen on their own because then the crisis is already facing those uh, communities. Uh, regarding what you are saying, look, I mean, uh, I am, uh, one of my specialities is uh, entrepreneurship. So uh, I hope to come back to engage you on what you have said. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, if you can just help me thank Dr. Mazrai. Thank you so much. Travel safely, sir.